The deforestation process in the Amazon frontier is a two-part process. First, the trees are cut and allowed to dry. And when I'm talking about 21st century deforestation, I don't mean a family headed into the woods with a chainsaw. I mean tractors connected by large chains that are pulling trees out by their roots. What we see is the second part now, in terms of our observations from satellite data, we see those same piles of wood that were cleared several months ago being set afire. So those fires are now not burning the residues from a harvested crop field or the last remaining grasses in a pasture. They're burning an enormous bonfire of Amazon logs that have been piled drying in the sun for several months. So this is really the second part of the story that began with our observations of an increase in deforestation. That deforestation only proceeds to someone being able to use those areas for agriculture if those areas are burned. The U.S. and Brazil have had a very close scientific partnership for the last 20 years when I've been working in the Amazon. I was actually part of the team that helped to develop Brazil's deforestation monitoring program with a new satellite that we had launched in the early 2000s. Um, one of the hallmarks, though, of that partnership and collaboration is the fact that the scientific and technical expertise for analyzing and interpreting those satellite images in Brazil is so high that after the development of that system, it's been running operationally within INPI um, without a lot of NASA involvement. What we're seeing in this transformation is the exchange of one set of services and those ecosystems in their natural state with the biodiversity and the ecosystem functions that they perform um, for a series of agricultural ones. And finding the right balance between the amount of environmental preservation and economic development has been really the crux of this issue for Brazil and for other countries that are faced with this same dilemma.